Good afternoon. This is Oliver W. Long story for ANN, August 15, 1877, continuing our series on the legacy that slavery left behind. After the defeat of the Confederate Army, the South found themselves the new enemy. Northern enterprising men traveled south to take advantage of the downtrodden white Democrats, who couldn't hold office because they fought against the Union. They were called carpetbaggers because they could supposedly fit all of their belongings into a popular piece of luggage called a carpetbag. ANN found one of these men, a former Union officer who became governor of Louisiana at the age of 25 and is now a successful sugar planter and president of the New Orleans Jackson Railroad. Welcome, Mr. Henry Clay Warmoff. Yeah, welcome, welcome. How are you, sir? Doing well. Good, good, good to see you. How's things been? Mr. Long Story, I gotta tell you something though. You know this word carpetbagger, <clears throat> this is something that uh, the Democrats created. It was a smear word. It was used against us who came down to the South and mixed with the blacks politically. And, you know, we plundered them because they deserved it. They were the last practitioner of racism and all that is bad. Okay, well, before we go on, let's clear up some possible misconceptions about carpetbaggers. Um, did you come, firstly, when you came to, the, uh, to Louisiana, did you come with a good purpose? Oh, yes, yes, of course we did. In fact, in many cases, we were invited. In fact, I do have a letter. Uh, they basically, General Sherman, well, I'll start with this. This is an invitation from the governor of North Carolina. June 16th, 1865. The price of farms was extremely low in North Carolina. Capital would find ready and very advantageous investment in sections of the state where productivity of soil is great. Skilled labor was in demand. There is nothing in the feeling of loyal people of this state which would make it unpleasant for northern labor to come into our midst. P.S. Should any of the young gentlemen or yourself come to North Carolina, I would be most happy to welcome you to our state and to show you our fraternal happy or our fraternal feelings which with what the loyal people of the state entertain for Northern Brothers. So there you have it. And General Sherman's General Order 15, which allowed freedmen, a section of the North, uh, it's actually the Augusta Islands, 40 acres, lots, as well as a mule or horse if the Union Army could spare them. Yes, I remember General Order 15, 40 acres and a mule it was yes. called, a giveaway program. Yes. A black abolitionist by the name of Tunis Campbell took over the Sea Islands in Georgia on that. That is correct. But becoming a governor, being elected to office, why was that so easy? Well, I was a lieutenant governor and a, or colonel in the war. And after the war was over, I headed south. And General Banks, who is in command of the Louisiana Gulf area, gave me my first job as a judge. I do want to explain something first, though. <clears throat> you see, the 10 Confederate states, when they pulled away from the Union, they were divided into five military districts, each with an official that was in control of them, making sure that they had new constitutions, ratified the 14th Amendment, form new form of a Republican government, of which these freedmen could then hold office or vote. And then the military people of the South and those officials that were Confederates could not hold office anymore. Therefore, the freed black men got positions as well as a chance to vote. I understand. So you actually had a legitimate advantage to become a politician. Well, yes. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> well, I, I did help them get their positions. I also helped them get the chance to vote, like I mentioned. So it just stand to reason that in 1868, I could become the first governor, the first Republican governor for the state of Louisiana. Okay. And then, of course, you know, the Democrats now as mad as hornets. Mm. They had to plunder my reputation, of course, long before I even had a chance to be in office and do anything honest or dishonest. Uh, here's a letter. It was just hand-delivered for you. A letter? Oh, would you show it to us, please? Oh, I guess so. No harm in that. <clears throat> Villain beware. 
Your doom is sealed. Death now awaits you. The midnight oil, the midnight owl screams revenge. <laughs> Even on KK stationery. How personal. <clears throat> now, who is this? Come here, young lady. Where did she go? Uh. <clears throat> anyway, I'll save that for later. Has, has, that, has that ever happened to you before? Well, I've got these before. On like certain occasions, you know, being in the position I am, threats do occur. Well, I guess that's what happens when you hold office. No, I suppose. Well, moving on, um, I'd like to ask about the corruption um, in Louisiana. Is it true what the Democrats are saying? Well, you know, the thing is, is that uh, I think the Negroes did very well against bribery and sort of the white politicians for that matter. There is no law in the state of Louisiana against bribery. I did at once try to get something through, but mysteriously it dis disappeared in the house. So I really don't recall what happened from that point. Okay, well, I actually have uh, an article from uh, the New York Sun. Its heading reads, Louisiana Thieves, and it claims that a company was paid $1 million for a state printing that might have been done for $50,000 with a competitive bidding. And there's, there was also another one uh, that claims that you had sold city and state owned stock of the New Orleans Railroad Company for a third of its value for a huge bribe. Uh, no, I was never convicted of anything like that. I completely deny this. You know, the thing is, newspapers do that to sell newspapers. I mean, that is flat down what I believe is going on there. All right, well, fair enough. So that we understand that the term carpetbagger is a smear word. Absolutely. And I understand that you were an honorable governor. While there will always be routine corruption, you meant well. I will leave it to our viewers to decide whether or not you are a candidate for the sainthood. Uh, before you go, you forget oh. your carpet bag suitcase in the hallway. Uh, what's, what's this? Is what, oh, for your campaign? No, no, no. <laughs> That's personal. That's personal. <laughs> My lady. Oh, look what you did now. There's something else in here, too. No. What's that? Oh, oh, oh. oh. there it was. <laughs> I must have it. I don't know about him. These carpetbaggers may be guilty of routine political corruption or misconduct, but look at the dirty hands upraised against them by the Democrats. This is Oliver W. Longstory saying we'll be back after a short break.